I like to know where people stand so I know how to treat you accordingly. They be trying to do it, I'm just doing me. Yeah. I be working hard, they just want it free. Damn. Be competitive with yourself. What's going on? This is Jay Sean for another quick video. I always say quick, it's never quick. Got some other factory accessories on the new 2022 Tahoe here, as you can see. I have the GoPro on my chest. I can't really see what I'm filming, so hopefully it's in the right frame. Um, let me kind of bend this down. There you go. I think that's more on my hand level, right? So hold up. I'm in the garage. It's cold as I don't know what. I always dreamed of having a garage, but damn, I ain't know what came with that. Anyway, so um, if you don't know, my pre I had a previous generation Tahoe. Uh, it, I had a, a few Boltons on there, nothing crazy, but like Catback Exhaust Me by Corsa. It was a Corsa Sport version. I had like the Corsa cold air intake, even a throttle body spacer that a lot of people tend to laugh at for the most part, like it's useless. Um, if anything, it adds a little more rumble, I think, underneath the hood. I do appreciate the quietness of this particular ride, so I, I was hesitant about adding a catback of any kind, but what I'm doing is I, I'm doing everything factory, right? So let me just show you a couple of things real quick. This, I think it's called fascia or fascia. This lower part of the bumper, it's like plastic, right? So model, the trim levels that are not high countries uh, come with a, a solid fascia, fascia in the back where there's no cutouts for dual, dual tip twin, dual twin um, exhaust, right? So normally when you add something like an aftermarket or they add a boiler or something like that, a factory boiler, it comes out or exits, I'm trying to get in the frame while this being on my chest, it exits out this side, right? So what I did is, because the factory is kind of ridiculous, I actually changed this. This is a factory piece from a high country, right? Where they have the cutouts. Hopefully you can see it, but there's a cutout here for the exhaust for the two pipes. And I have it on the other side as well. As you can see what the existing one looked like, it looked kind of horrible. It's very light, but I'm gonna have two black tips. So the dual exhaust, twin dual exhaust. So it's gonna be basically dual tips, both sides gonna exit, which is very, uh, it's something basically, basically that you're gonna see only in uh, the high country trim level, I believe, or maybe a Premier. I don't even know. I don't even know if they still do Premier in 22s, I forgot. But this is a factory fascia, fascia, whatever, you know what I mean? So it's cut out right here too, if you can see it. So that's dope. Uh, what else? So I got the Corsa Sport. I ordered it directly from Corsa. They're, I think they're like out in Ohio. I'm not too, too far away from them. Um, it's like a 30 to 45 day wait. They make it to order. So it's brand new, custom made. Um, same with the, the highest end version of filters they would provide in the uh, cold air intake is what I ordered. Um, if you already saw, let me try to show you. I have, uh, hold on, my screen went black. I have like all the weather mats and I have them everywhere. I have the weather mats um, throughout the entire seats, but I also have it um, on the back. So if you look at the back of here on the third row, it basically has a plastic mat on there and on the very trunk, I guess you want to call it, on the very back, there's also a mat there. So in my previous Tahoe, all I have, I did change all the door speakers out and I put, it's like, a, it's only like a 12 inch JBL power subwoofer. Man, that thing was good for me. You know what I mean? It had the, the correct, um, I think it's called a L2, I believe it's called, uh, but it helps with the signal and, and make it sound a lot better. I'm not a super audiophile when it comes to installations or anything like that, or an audio techie, but I did order a JL Audio if you saw it in any of my stories. It's a much thinner profile, wedge box powered, but it's, I love the way that you can disconnect it. It's not like you need a screwdriver to take the live wires out. It's like a clip you pull out. So what I think I might do is put that wedge in here because I like to use the Tahoe for space if I need it. So if I ever need to move it out the way, it's lighter, smaller, and it's easy to disconnect. I just gotta find a good or better installer because I did everything myself last time. And with these newer cars, with all these electronics in it, especially the Mercedes, I'm a little hesitant of trying to do a lot of this stuff myself. It's too much electrical stuff involved. This bends right here. I have the box in the trunk. I'm not even using it. It's not even plugged in, but it's so much electrical stuff going on. And if you saw one of my previous videos, I was test driving a Tesla, ended up buying this instead, but 
made up my mind 2022 a tesla is coming it's going to come to the channel it's going to come to my life in real life but i'll bring it and share it with the channel was going to get a model y now i'm going to get the model 3 performance as of right now i'm going to do the same color scheme as the white and the black keep it factory um i don't know if we're going to trade this in or we're going to keep it keep it and get the electric i'm not really sure um so I don't really want to start messing with wires and installation costs and fees and stuff if I don't know if I'm going to keep it. We're keeping this for sure, so I'm going to get it wired up. And then when, it, when the wires are here, I can easily connect it um, either speaker. So I'm just going to pick which one I'm going to use at that point. And as of right now, I'm, not, I'm just not really sure. More than likely, the wedge is going to be there. My dog following me, man, looking scruffy and, and, and a little dirty. All right, so, um, so let me get to the point of the video. I'm sorry, man talking too much so besides that i don't want to block i'm gonna block my lace plate as you can see i already have the bow tie i call it a glow tie it's a factory fit factory part um it's the illuminated black glow tie or glow illuminated um chevy bow tie i guess i always put those on my my joints a lot of people stop stop me with my other vehicle i mean it was all blacked out i literally had people offering to buy my last tahoe it was crazy and i was in a whole different county where i live at and i saw somebody driving my old tahoe that i sold to the dealer that was bought from me you know what i mean so that's crazy to me too but anyway i have three different parts here this is the first one this is obviously the second one and this is the third one now this one right here is kind of important for me so i baby my vehicles the fact that i even have these boxes on the hood is kind of weird because i don't want to I, I think so deep into it that you can scratch the clear coat just by rubbing the box putting any type of hard object on here like my backpack with the metal buckle i might scratch it stuff like that really does happen so i care about my stuff i'm very gentle and um only because this is cardboard and I'm being gentle and careful about it is why I'm laying it. But this part right here, even though I have the covers for the rear of the trunk for the opening, it is it's only for it's only for the actual like when you open the trunk and you lay stuff down. This right here, have you ever like leaned over your bumper like this and tried to reach in and put stiff stuff inside? You might have a zipper on your jacket right here and you're hitting against the car. And let me tell you something else. If you ever work on your own car. They sell these things that you, when you open your hood up, right? It's, it's like this little pleather looking, uh, imagine like the size of a towel. You lay it over your, your edge of your, your frame in here or your uh, quarter panel, or whatever it's called. Because when you lean over and you're looking to go inside your car, especially with a taller vehicle like this, it's so easy to scratch the body with your jacket, with a zipper, anything like that. So you're supposed to cover it up. If you go to a mechanic and they're not doing that or make sure they do it or remind them to do it, especially if, if you have a newer vehicle that you care about, because they don't think you're going to notice these little things. But I'd be noticing things after the fact. And I'm like, man, I don't remember these little marks here before. And then I can't remember if it was actually there. No, I can't prove it, right? So this particular accessory right here, it is overpriced to me, but at the end of the day, I want everything factory and I don't think they have a different alternative. I was surprised at how small the box is um, based on what I think it's supposed to do or what I wanted to do. This right here, I think this is like $170 or something crazy. As you can see, it's kind of like that pleathery material. Actually, I thought it was gonna be soft on one side, but it's not. So I'm kind of confused. Okay, let me see. All right, so, all right, I'm trying to figure out how this is supposed to stay on here. So there is Velcro right here. So I'm assuming you just put it underneath and these are like little weighted things that you're gonna slide somewhere. I, I don't know, tuck it in somewhere. The problem is I have uh, rubber mats already, um, all weatherproof rubber mats in there. So I don't know how this is gonna actually hang, but it's meant to hang over the rear bumper like this. Let me pull this down a little bit. So when you lean over and you're loading your trunk, say with bricks or some kind of top soil or whatever you're doing in there, you're leaning over it like this and you're not actually scratching the paint or potentially scratching the paint. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this exactly, to be honest with you. I couldn't open the trunk uh, or the rear latch. Uh, so um, yeah, I don't know. It looks very overpriced, I'm not gonna lie, but it does serve a purpose. And for me, uh, if that means not scratching my bumper up and not worrying as much, then so be it. I don't know another alternative at this point. Besides, actually, I drive with a moving blanket and I like to unfold that. But the moving blanket is kind of large and I don't always like to keep doing that. So this right here. So in the Mercedes, I have AMG style uh, pedals in there. Um, when you buy 
pedals, covers, or whatever you want to call it that are not factory, they tend to be super cheap and they tend to have these little clips that you bend. To me, that's not safe because this is not secure. And then the bottom line is, that's where your brake and your, your acceleration goes. You don't want that to be compromised in any kind of way. So this particular thing right here, again, it was very overpriced. Um, I think I paid around 160 for these, but they're all GM parts. Everything I have here, nothing is aftermarket, right? So, uh, yeah, these are hard to put on. I will tell you that at least they were on the Mercedes. They're super hard. Like, I mean, they're meant to be that way. So what you have to do, I mean, this, this is hard. What you have to do is take off. And I didn't even realize that these were smoke. They're like a smoke, uh, like a gun metal more than a brushed, which is kind of strange to me. Um, in the, it doesn't bother me, but I thought it was going to match with my brush wheels better. I mean, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. It's literally like a smoke, like it's literally like a gun metal more than anything. But um, yeah, these are very hard to put on, to be honest with you. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, I just like them better. You have to take off the old ones. You can't put them on top. You have to take them off. And then these right here, I'm not really crazy about these, but I just did it. Um, most cars, some cars, like on the bins, I have uh, puddle lights, factory puddle lights. I have factory lights here. I have factory lights under the, in the door when you open it. Some people put aftermarket, like your, your logos and stuff like that. This is all factory. I did change this one though. So when this mirror opens, it says Mercedes Benz on the floor. But the new 2022 models, I believe, have that as a factory option. So it doesn't look too aftermarket, I guess. This right here with all the 360 cameras. Let me move this camera so I can see what I'm doing. With all these 360 cameras and all that stuff, there's also a puddle light here, a factory puddle light. It's the same thing that's underneath the kick part of uh, when you open, you know, when you kick down and you open the trunk. This is the same kind of thing. Um, this one is just adding the Chevy bow tie to the floor. I'm not really crazy about that on this truck. I think it's a little weak. But in another thing that I noticed with this particular truck, you don't have to actually, see look, how I got a scratch. No, that's not a scratch. You don't actually have to lock the doors. Like I can walk away from the truck and no lock on its own, right? When I walk up to the car, because I have this big old case on here, I can't feel where the buttons are, like my old remote. So I don't want to accidentally hit the wrong button. So if I ever pull this out, I have to physically look at it, right? I don't really like that. The other one, I can have it in my pocket, feel it around and hit the button that I need to hit, right? So this one, I tend to not start all the time uh, from a distance. Sometimes I walk up to the car, just push the button like this. And when you do that, is the only time you're gonna actually see the puddle light come down. And you, if you see my hand right here, you see the light right here? Light up, hold on, let me see. You see the light illuminating? So with this light illuminating, it just basically is lights the floor up so you can see when you're walking to the car. In most circumstances, it's already you're already gonna be in a parking lot. You're not really gonna notice it. I don't notice it that much on this vehicle. It doesn't even seem like it exists. So in reality, you're not really gonna see that bow tie too much on the logo, but um, it seems to be a basically, a, you just pry, pry it out and then you pretty much plug and play the old connections with the new connections and it's gonna have a Chevy bow tie right here. So. Um, I don't think there's nothing I really have to technically show you as far as these pedals are concerned. I'm just going to pry them off and then reinstall them. And then I'm going to do the same thing uh, with, watch out, watch out, dog. I'm going to do the same thing with these pedals and the, uh, the, the puddle lights. Um, this is not an installation vid video, just kind of showing you. I did see somebody else do, I think he had like a white Tahoe or something like that. And he had did the same thing. You see how the door's locked on his own, I didn't even have to hit the button. Um, it can be a little annoying if you're trying to go in and out. This right here, I still like it, but I do still wish that this was more of a lighter brushed aluminum look. Because if you look here, I have all these panels here that are brushed and it doesn't match like at all. It's like... I mean, it's brushed. I mean, it's like a gun metal. You know what I'm saying? It's not what I was expecting whatsoever. So I don't know. We'll see. I'll get right back to you after it's installed. Y'all tell me what y'all think. I'm going to try to record me taking this off. It, it, when I did this before, it was a pain. So if this don't show up, then you just ain't going to see what I'm doing. I'm literally just prying this off from each corner. You pry it off like this. I don't know if there's an actual better way to do this because on this one, you kind of just have to see how it's set up. Uh, I mean, 
I don't know if there's a better way to do it, to be honest, if you're supposed to start one corner or not. But you definitely want to cut it and make sure it's inside these grooves. Uh, you want to make sure this is a safety thing, man. You want to make sure that these things are actually uh, going to be secure. I'm telling you, this is so hard. I wish this was one piece that was already connected that you just like bolt on or something because stretching this stuff is no joke. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, there's got to be a better way or something. Something that I'm not doing correctly because it feels like it don't even fit. Like, this is not even on here, right? Like, this got to be an easier way. I would prefer it to be more brushed aluminum look. But in reality, when I open it, I still like that look better than these dusty rubber pads. It just looks better. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. So I'm going to end this real quick so I can hurry up and install it and get to the puddle lamps or puddle lights and uh, wrap this video up. All right. All right, man. It's finally done. This is so painful. I'm telling you right now, I'm not a quitter. But if this is my job to install these every day, I quit. That joint got my fingers in pain. Like literally, man. The way that you got to roll these over, because I mean, it's meant to be this way because it's a safety thing and you want these to hug basically like your factory covers do. It's just, man, the installation process is not simple. I don't even know how I got this one on the top end. I really didn't even have it lifted up or pried up, but I had this side. Finally had my finger jammed in there. It's not that flexible on purpose. But as I was pushing real hard with this upwards, it, it felt like it just slipped over and it's in there. I mean... If it isn't, I mean, I can't tell. I mean, you don't want to find out why you're driving, obviously, but it feels like it's in there. Again, in the video, it kind of looks like it's regular brushed. That's probably why I thought it was that way, too. Um, these are dirty. I need to clean these. Whew. That joint's painful, man. My fingers are hurting for real. Let me see, like, the little presents. Whew. When you open the door, this won't mean a lot to certain people, but to me, I'm, I'm real big on little things mean a lot. So that little presence right there, um, I like it. Do I think it's worth the price? Not necessarily. I don't think nothing's worth the price necessarily. It just has to be worth it to you. Um, either way, I think it still adds a little bit of class, touch to it, whatever you want to call it. So next up right here, we have these puddle lights. Um, there is these little clips, like these little holes that you have to pry something in i just have to double check how i gotta pry it so i don't break a clip that's the worst thing ever it's a little difficult first of all i can't see but i don't want to scratch my factory parts there you go see this clip right here i'm pushing in and out you have to push it pretty hard at an angle and it's gonna fall out right there Use a small screwdriver. Be careful you don't scratch all your stuff up. You might want to put these back for whatever the reason. Um, so these are labeled. So the ones that are orange is the driver's side. And you're basically going to put it in the way you took this one out. I'm holding everything with my hand. So just by looking at this, it goes in like this. Um, it should be self-explanatory. That's it. You just, hopefully you saw that. Just like this. And this one. If you ain't sure, hold on to them. So with that being said, um, I'm going to stop talking now. Make sure you do everything at top level, at your top level. Remember, you're no competition with anybody except yourself. So make sure your next move is your best move, or at least your better move. And um, yeah, if y'all, uh, I'm about to be, you know, sometime soon, real soon, month or two or whatever it may be, uh, Tesla owner, already this Tahoe owner. If you got questions about this Tahoe or any type of little things that you can do to upgrade it and keep his factory looking as possible, let me know. Um, I'm definitely gonna share a lot of things in the journey with the Tesla because it's such a different experience than any engine type of vehicle or gas power vehicle. So uh, I'm excited about that. So, so far right now is gonna be the Model 3 Performance. I'm not 100% sure, but I have to double check to make sure the back seat is roomy enough because uh, yeah, that's super important. Because if it's not roomy at all, then I might as well get a coupe or something of some other brand or whatever the case is. Mercedes has 
has electric cars too, which I really like. Um, the thing of it is they're just getting into it and I'd rather not be like a guinea pig to see how well they work at this point. I'd rather just wait a few years or so. Silverados are coming out with an electric version, it's super dope, but they want like over 100,000 apparently is what they're aiming for in 2023. So probably next year or so, they'll probably start doing it. I think you can do pre-orders now. So I don't really think that's in the works for me, but at the end of the day, I really do like some of the features that they have on there, but they're still new to electric too, for the most part, besides little Chevy bolts and stuff like that. I'm just gonna stay away from that and stick to Tesla because that just seems like the tried and true electric car at this point. I looked, I thought about the um, the Lucid, but uh, I think I'm still gonna stick with the Tesla at this point. Lucid is super dope in the interior. Um, I don't, I've never actually seen one drive on the road in my area at all, so um, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me uh, end this video now. If you have any questions about part numbers, any of that other stuff, or you just was watching the video, um, but if you have questions about the parts and whatever else, if I didn't cover it, let me know, and I'll try to put it in the description or in the comments below. Later.